Filmmakers, a close-up look at independent filmmakers and their works. Your host is Gerald O'Grady. My filmmaker guest is James Blue. He grew up in Oklahoma and then moved to Oregon, uh, graduated from the University of Oregon, studied film in Paris, and in 1962, he uh, directed his, his first feature, The Olive Trees of Justice. He won a, 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 a Critics Award at the Cannes Film Festival and was shown in London and uh, New York film festivals. He then returned to the United States and made a series of documentary films the United States Information Agency. And in the last few years, he's been directing SoundSync Super 8 filmmaking projects at Rice University in Houston, Texas, and Summers at the State University of New York in Buffalo. James, your last film was an uh, observational cinema. Uh, it took you back to Africa, this uh, Kenya Baran. And what was the nature of that project? It was a part of a series of films that were to study five different cultures, traditional cultures, that were undergoing the impact of change, uh, modern modernization of the economies of the countries in which they found themselves. And David McDougall and I co-directed the first project in Kenya on the up near Ethiopia, uh, in the Marsabit area, on the Buran tribe. And we were really interested in what was just happening at that moment, kind of in the, the making an analysis, a filmic analysis of the kind of pain that change brings on people. I don't say it's good or bad, but that it brings a kind of, of hurt. There, things have to be shifted, and, and, and things are shifted that one doesn't even realize. And uh, so we went there in uh, 1972 and made this. Perhaps if we could look at the first clip, I would uh, get a, a picture of the kind of uh, terrain in which this finds itself, this tribe is. The problem in shooting this kind of film was what's important, you know. You can go out and film cre uh, exotic creatures in Africa and make them look like exotic creatures, or you can uh, try to be human, try to see them as human beings. And so McDougall and I set out to do that, and of course sync sound was very important there and you'll be able to see subtitles of what they're saying. And I think that changes the image uh, that we might have of them uh, th than if we weren't able to understand them. This is one of the villages they live in. They're semi-nomadic, and they live in little uh, grass huts like that, which they move around. Part of the problems in this, uh, then, was to organize the material so that the viewer would not only see how they moved and how they spoke and so forth, but also be able to understand something about what was a symbol or what was a sign of change. ولكن <laughs> Oh, Faida in Cap Dodge and Had Ungufu Ravamba lets you in Cap Dosinki as a delty. Hati I dem to you. What do you want to do? Yes, speak of the. Eh, where you bet I know is in good dummy Hati, Hati to the Gabo Ramos. Eh, a charanga to Domalet, Akaboran, the Yolan good do dancer, good do dancer. Akasir Kala Timoyi. Lamasadi, Lamasadi, Tunimo, Beta Aba, Wam Irafut Furumale, 
nyata lengar galchitu nara lengar galchitu dara lengar galchitu hindanda hada le ungufu infitu hatille nireka akana te rijirije meka kachila akani rinjiru akani rinjiru borani ni galin kap inka tikao bafe fer ren kap inka tikao bafe fer lonin kap inka tikao bafe fer ya bi kap kap tikao bafe fer agarte nami wan kan ju hin alini anin len gu ya kan ju horitis tis abalen in qasara gudo qabas jarsil len jarsil yol yol le sanal len hatil len hatil len yo kan won alin hin dalin Tiga tinelmat. Quran kuni bobe safeda. Fedan. Buru tikira. Isu mega. Abam buru tikira. Kanwa muka. Kaloni. Kare. Kafarda. Kagala. Kadalla. Kaoba. Katika. Isir kale kon kayolle sadu jala. kayolle lama tu jala sir kale ko wan kan qaba inni du be kayolle agana challa jala di jolla agana ay de di challa ko du binni ma inni du buji in qabu mo inni du bi jolle tan sadin challa ma fa fe akinu lon kam kan lon in qabu sir kale in qabu akinu re kam kan re in qabu ak worri mu gal kam kan gal in qabu in qabu akinu ya biti sinu kan worri wan sun in tis in tis fardalle la te burana fardi fardalle kam na hanalle ta kalle in qabu in qabu sir kale wan ni ne regu artazum tan erik erik jolle wasomti wasomte tan musadent wasomi tan musadent wasome abanduri gar galet udani sai itu do itu fincho anan kenna anan kayo jeda ni sindu gumbe titi jigan akanum gar galche gudizum gudisam dubi dir sai yenan school so isin tam ter nam kar kar kan talonte sitana ter nam kar kar mo ta school so mte tindu mushara fanyate wara mushara kan fa ke mitu sila er kar kar All right, this next clip we'll see, uh, it comes much later in the film, and there are some portions of it in English, but I may have to clarify it a little. Mak ibu fikir ni rumah suku nampak lagi. Ada mobil yang sangat mulia. Gaf turi ini ni akan cerkali lah film ini. Bini sifar dia, dia rendil dia tanpa sifar dia. Sunya merah kisah. Ikan itu kejap. Ikan itu kejap. Wajah. Eh, kejap tu. Nampai taburan ni wan jadi wan nam nami jesswa, hadiri jesswa, karbi jesswa, kena kerja tu. Wah, koru tu, profesor. Alright, this is the teacher giving out the tests, the giving the tests that have been graded back. See, we are doing tests, and then our book. This is Peter explaining what what's going on here. Sometimes I got 90. Sometimes Somebody I got, got 90. 90. Others I'm got 80. The I'm second. the first that's and he's the second. Way. And that's the way things go at school. That's what he's telling us. He's the son of the man I'm in the red I'm hat we saw early in the earlier sequence. Apuda dido. Adan mamo na baso. Wali harukano kote. Is someone here who has been in land for a long time? Is there someone here who's been a lion for a long time? Now, a lion. Is those who are who are winning, who are the first in this a test? A lion are, are those who are, have been winning, who are, who are first in the lion, test. You see, they are the leaders. You see, lion is the president of animals. The lion is the leader. He's the president of animals. So there you can see uh, there are three small sequences there together, and I think that. Although the first sequence was the first of the film, and this, these two short ones come much later in the film, right. one can see how arrangement of sequences in blocks tends to help you start making comparisons uh, almost on your own. You, for instance, the, the business of the rings on the man's arm, where he says you get them for, being, for killing a lion or an elephant or, uh, or, an, or, enemy. What we, or an enemy. Right. Uh, but 
the, they only think about school now, the, 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 the young people. And, and then in school, we see them using these animals, lion, elephant, as uh, a way of rewarding them, of giving grades. You're a lion if you got first in mathematics. You're an elephant if you got second. Uh, and uh, so you can see that somehow the culture is trying to keep its tradition together, but by using the symbols, changing it completely. Yeah, in this next sequence that we're going to show, which is the sequence which the water pump is introduced, you get a similar kind of union of the old and the new, I think. Right. This was a time of, of uh, coming uh, drought, and they had to uh, water their cattle every now and then, and the water was getting low in the well. Traditionally, they watered by hand, carrying the water up in buckets and dumping it in a trough. But the government had given them a gasoline pump to help get the thing together. And so in the scene, we can see the uh, mm -hmm. uh, society, uh, the traditional society's methods and the old and the new methods working side by side mm -hmm. in some way or another. Uh, you see a whole variety of changes, mm -hmm. it seems to me. You have the 
when you drew attention to of the transformation of the language of the lion. Yeah. And you have the contrast of the, the clothing, kind of store-bought and the homemade or traditional. Yeah. And, and if you go through, uh, it's this sort of method of putting things together in chunks rather than taking bits of one scene and intertwining them with bits of another, which might have made a more supple kind of narration, narrative mm -hmm. form of the picture. Leaving them in chunks allows you to kind of to, you s to see what's happening, but see things around it, you know. So there are a lot of associations that one can make. And why the way we've been trying to associate or to arrange this picture so that people can make associations from one scene to another that are not necessarily linear associations. They could be uh, changing associations. And so what I hope that people would come up with in seeing all of the sequences, and I think there's, it's suggested in, in these three or four mm -hmm. uh, that we'll s we're seeing here, is that the culture, uh, these people have more or less accepted change. Uh, not to change so much, but as the things that change is brought. They accept the government's help, even though they, with the, they have a little trouble with the water pump. They think school is a good thing. Uh, and, uh, and they see that as sort of helping their lives in their context, that it's their traditional culture. What they don't seem to realize, or just beginning to, uh, uh, to realize, is that having accepted these things brings a fundamental change to That's the culture. That's what I was wondering, because it seems on one level it's mm -hmm. school or, you know, uh, yeah. taking care of the cattle. Yeah. So but it was necessary to find a way of showing this. So we were lucky to be able to be at a tribal meeting when they got the word uh, uh, about paying their taxes, because now they belong to a new, situ a new society, in a sense. Mm -hmm. They had to pay up. This is where nationalization is, in a sense, being right. created. Yeah. So let's look at that scene. Mm. All right, here's the tribal chieftain, Gilo. The day the McDougal is, this is one long take, for the most part or not. Yes, I think this is something worth pointing out. In this, shooting this kind of material, one has to be careful not to create meaning by the use of the camera so much as to reveal it. And there's a subtle distinction. Uh, in, in attempting to reveal, one, one tries to keep the shots reasonably long and, and where, uh, where possible make connections between one part of the scene and another through a movement rather than just cutting the way fiction is able to. However, the, the, the real meeting goes on for two and a half hours. You have to cut, you have to reduce, you have to see what really is the, are the essential elements. And so we're seeing about four minutes of that. Yes. And, we're, and so you need to, to reduce uh, all of those elements and put them together. Well, it became pro a problem for us. Uh, what do you leave in and what do you take out? And one of the uh, rules for a cutting was to never make a point through a cut. Just simply put together those elements of the scene uh, that we felt were the essential elements and then and not attempt to convince the audience of anything just by the way you cut. Yeah. Now this is one of the more deep-rooted changes now that they're now for the schools having made for that choice. For the schools, but they're having to pay taxes. So yeah. now paying taxes gives them problems. Yes, he says the government has papers. <laughs> Uh, as much as possible, you see, David tries to keep the shot going where the things, when it seems important, to keep it in it. Uh, uh, there are relationships is drawn. So it's important to know that he, this man here, felt that way in response to that provocation from the officer so that David kept that shot together. Mm. 
maasii tijaa gisiin beetani namin bere nu wajira ino lu haatu jir heen najira dibi wa wa qaba ilaa bi shaatir one gets the impression that one's seeing several different kind of shots but actually it's been a long take almost ever yeah. since uh, the lieutenant there started speaking and you were recording the sound yes i was taking the sound and david was shooting and we both edited <laughs> It's still continuing, you see. It's like an early town meeting here. Trying to think of how to send the children to school. Yeah, I think McDougal's uh, camera work here was uh, rather extraordinary. His ability to give you variety within the shot and making every change in camera count mm -hmm. as seeing something, not just creating the effect by taking a close-up, you know, as we've learned What interests me about in it is, school. in a way, of, uh, it's not only who's in front of the camera, but in a way, who's behind the camera. And it seems to me that in your 20-year career, that one of the things that's most interested you is to democratize the film medium. And I'm wondering if we could talk a bit about your oh, yeah. work at Rice University yeah. now that you've moved towards SoundSync Super 8. Right. You know, what I've, I feel, uh, some people say, well, what are you doing, abandoning making films? No, I feel like I'm taking sort of one of the next steps, one of the most interesting next steps possible for documentary filmmakers, and that is becoming, in a sense, a kind of midwife between uh, filmmaking and the, uh, the public. Because as a documentary filmmaker, we've always been going out taking pictures of subjects. Mm -hmm. But that's only one part of the truth. It seems to me the truth also comes from the subjects themselves. So a number of people are investigating the possibility of turning around and giving the camera to the subject, mm -hmm. you see. And in that's possible. I know David McDougall now has been in Africa giving ca Super 8 cameras to uh, the Africans to shoot something in the You've film. You've been He's doing been that with students. And, and, uh, in, and this works in a community level. We'd, we uh, we're training uh, students to make use of it as a tool in their own work. Uh, we're training people in the community to begin not to use it to express it. No, they, they don't want to be filmmakers. They want to be scientists, anthropologists, sociologists. Right. I don't know a lot of things. But the, uh, the thing is to get it um, to let them be literate in it um, and let them be able to use it. To, I mean, so people, so everybody can write, everybody can use the film to communicate, to enter into some kind of dialogue of communication. And so I feel that's been a very important step forward and that the role of the filmmaker in that is to be a midwife, is mm -hmm. to help people come to mm -hmm. that capability. Uh, and so uh, I'd like to, I brought a, a, a Super 8 clip from a film made by one of our students. He's, uh, it's a first, he's the first time he's made a film in Super 8. He made it about a junior high school teacher, Lois Bailey at Colin Kelly Junior High in Houston, a teacher who he loved, and he loved mm -hmm. the atmosphere she created with the students. And so he made a simple portrait. And I think it shows the possibilities that Super 8 opens up yeah. for all of us. I remember it was about 40 minutes long, and we're going to see just, uh, just one part of it. Three yeah. minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Okay, that was by Bill Blanton, who was a beginning student in, in uh, filmmaking and uh, using Super 8, and he had only been studying two months when he ma started making that film. I think it really opens up wide possibilities for communication for all of us. I know you have a grant this year to pursue that yourself, don't you? Oh, yes. I'm going to try to do a kind of cross-section of portraits of the city of Houston, using also material furnished by the people in the community. Yeah, good. Thanks very much for coming, Jim. Thank you. Filmmakers is produced in cooperation with Media Study Buffalo and is a videotape production of WNED Buffalo. Thank <laughs> you.